If you would like a free newsletter on this or other subjects, just give us a call at Christian Answers. The phone number is area code 512-218-8022. That's 512-218-8022. Or you could email us at cdebater at aol.com. That's cdebater at aol.com. Thank you. Hello, this is Larry Wessels, Director of Christian Answers of Austin, Texas, Christian Debater Ministries. I'm pleased to introduce to my audience a dear brother in the Lord, Richard Bennett, Director of Berean Beacon Ministries, an outreach to Roman Catholics. It is great to be here, Larry. For people that don't know you, you were a Roman Catholic priest for 22 years. Is that right? Please give us a short account of your life. Yes, I was a Catholic priest for 22 years. I was a Catholic altogether for 48 years, having grown up in Dublin, Ireland. I was trained uh, very early on in my education, in what we call secondary and elementary education, uh, by the Jesuits. And then I decided to become a Catholic priest, and I spent eight years in preparation. It was a novitiate year, and then six years to ordination when I was ordained a priest in Dublin, Ireland in 1963, and then one year in Rome, eight years in all. Then I spent uh, 21 years in uh, Trinidad West Indies as a parish priest carrying out the the work of a priest. I had the best academic training you could get finishing up in the city of Rome itself near the Vatican, and I I really had a desire to bring P Catholics to uh, what we thought was a way of being right with God so that they could get to purgatory and then that they finally could get to heaven. And I was great for doing penances and sacrifices. And then I was very devout in Trinidad, uh, uh, baptizing babies, hearing people's confessions and doing all the sacraments. It was in 1972, I had a very serious accident where I was three days unconscious after the serious accident and then after that time when I got out of the hospital in the sanatorium I began searching in the Bible for what is truth. It took me 14 years of comparing the Bible to Catholicism before I realized that I was dead in trespasses and sins and it was by grace alone that we are saved. I One night I got on the floor in my house and I cried out to God for faith and his grace to save a wretch like me, dead in trespass and sins, and he gloriously did that. It was about two months afterwards. I very reluctantly left the Catholic Church because my prayer after I was right with God by biblical salvation was that I could really love Catholics and give them the real true gospel of grace. That is grace alone, faith alone, and in Christ alone. But then in prayer over those two months after I was saved, the Lord showed me that I could best serve him and love Catholics if I left actually the priesthood and the Catholic Church and reached out to Catholics nonetheless. And um, I, I did that. I left uh, the priesthood in 1985 and uh, reached the States in 1986. And uh, I, um, I just prayed and prayed that I would have a love for Catholics to reach out. I thank the Lord that after one year as a missionary in China, I was able to start the ministry that I now have called BereanBeacon.org. It is to show Catholics the real truth of where salvation is in a person, not in any church, and it is by God's grace, not by any ritual that any church does. So this has been really wonderful. I've seen priests save. I saw two priests in Poland, you know, through our ministry. We have a Polish webpage, besides many other languages, and of course in English. 
And I thank God that I have seen God's grace poured out, and that is my heart's desire, Larry, that Catholics would know the truth and that evangelicals in this very false ecumenical age would see the differences. Uh, I have a very interesting article on the webpage, uh, Are Catholics Christians? And we've had tremendous response to that, evangelicals whose eyes have been opened in reading that article. So it's with love for Catholics and to show the truth of Christ Jesus, that God will be glorified and many, many souls saved, particularly Catholics, to the glory of his name. Outstanding. That was a wonderful testimony, Richard. Uh, could you just real briefly tell us about, the, you've written some books and you've already mentioned your ministry, but what are these books you've written and how can people find them? Yes, I have written or uh, edited, uh, written some and edited others and uh, they have been amazing. I just thank God. Uh, our most well-known book is Far From Rome, Near to God, The Testimonies of 50 Converted Catholic Priests. Since 1994, that book has sold steadily across the world in English and in other languages. And uh, it's on the third edition now. And uh, the other book that has my heart really displayed and my love for Catholics is the book I've written about Catholicism called Catholicism East of Eden Insights into Catholicism for the 21st Century. This book is uh, published by Banner of True Trusts like the uh, book of the 50 testimonies of former priests and um, I thank God for that because the Lord has used that book and it brought many Catholics to himself by that book. Uh, the other book that my heart was in in editing together with Mary Hertel is a book called The Truth Set Us Free, 20 Former Nuns Tell Their Stories. And that book has been used mightily of the Lord as well. And I thank God for the, those women, most of whom are still alive and active in reaching out to Catholics themselves. And it is just a wonderful testimony of God's grace. And the the other book I've written is called On the Wings of Grace Alone. I've edited that, and that is just 30 ordinary Catholics, and uh, what we call lay Catholics, and how the Lord brought them to salvation. That is a, an amazing book, too. How can you obtain these books? Well, go to our webpage, bereanbeacon.org, and just go to the folder on the left-hand side, Books, and when you click on that, it gives all the details of how you can get those books. Outstanding. Well, Richard, uh, we're going to go into uh, showing people your videos now here across uh, particularly our audience on YouTube. But uh, many people don't know that you and me go to the same church here in Austin, Texas. So it gives me a special opportunity to be around you a lot just so we can do ministry work. But anyway, I want to thank you for allowing us to post your videos uh, on the Internet through YouTube and other Internet servers. You praise God and may souls be saved and the Lord glorified. Amen and amen. Amen. Confession to a priest is the topic I want to discuss with you in the next uh, few minutes. It is a quite interesting topic. Uh, many Catholics want to know about confession, even though the sacrament of confession is not as popular now as it used to be, but still it is a question that comes up again and again as people come to our web page and people ask uh, by emails and other ways, what is confession to a priest? So it is a topic we should address and the Catholic Church is emphatic <laughs> that the priest has power to forgive sin and that this is the only ordinary way in which your sins can be forgiven. I'd like to read from the Catechism of the Catholic Church, and it is easy to find the Catholic Catechism online, or you can get, maybe you have a copy of the Catechism yourself, but paragraph 1493, exact words. 
one who desires to obtain reconciliation with God and with the church must confess to a priest all unconfessed grave sins as he remembers after having carefully examined his conscience. You must. It's not as, as if this was advised to you or maybe, um, you know, that you would confess your sins to God and then maybe later on confess to a priest. No, you must confess to a priest. So it says, paragraph 1493, it's also in the official law known as the Code of Canon Law. It's Canon 960 of the official Code of Catholic Canon Law. Quotation, individual and integral confession and absolute solution constitute the only ordinary way which the faithful person who is aware of serious sin is reconciled with God and the Church. This is the only ordinary way. Uh, this is, comes as a shock when we read in the First John, you know, uh, if we confess our sins, He, God, is faithful and just to forgive our sins. That's when we confess our sins directly to God. Uh, the, the, the Catholic Church says the only ordinary way is, uh, is integral confession and absolution. It's an obligation and it is a serious matter that you have to, ob that you're obliged to do. The Catholic Church says in its official teaching that there is no offense, no sin that the Church cannot forgive. This is paragraph 982. Quotation, there is no offense, however serious, that the Church cannot forgive. There is no one, however wicked or guilty, who may not confidently hope for forgiveness provided his repentance is honest. Paragraph 982. Read it for yourself in the Catholic Catechism. This is the the claimed power that the Catholic Church has, no matter how guilty you are, the Church has the power to forgive, and it comes through the priests. And so they say that the priest has this power. It's the following paragraph I quoted from 982, now 983, says the priests have received from God a power that he has given neither to angels nor to archangels. God confirms what his priests do here below. Were there no forgiveness of sins in the church, there would be no hope of life to come or eternal liberation. <laughs> you have no freedom except, except through confession, confessing into the ear of a priest. And this is a a quite <laughs> amazing topic. Um, I have published a book, uh, Catholicism East of Eden, and uh, it is easy to obtain this book in any nation of the world. On uh, chapter 8 of the book, I deal with this topic. I call it Encounters in the Confession Box. And I give the official teaching of the Catholic Church of what the priest actually say, says. The priest is sitting there in the box and the people are whispering their sins into his ear and the actual prayer of absolution is quite a long prayer. It's not just I absolve you. Let me read the exact words. God the Father of mercies through the death and resurrection of his Son, has reconciled the world to himself and sent the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness of sins through the ministry of the Church. May God give you pardon and peace, and I absolve you from all your sins in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I absolve you. It's the priest that absolves your sins. He is acting 
as the judge. Now that is interesting that the Catholic Church says that and it it's emphatic that the um, it's a priest who forgives your sins. It's not like God forgives your sins as you would see again and again in scripture. It's not it's the priest and the the Council of Trent was emphatic on this and it it, it, it had a, a whole canon the where it says in canon nine hundred and two I beg your pardon, yes, 902, and it is um, the official teaching of the Catholic Church as found in Denzinger, 902, and it's Canon 9. So it's Denzinger, 902, Canon 9, exact quotation. However, although, although the absolution of the priest is the dispensation of the benefaction of another, Yet it is not a bare ministry only, either of an announcing the gospel or declaring the forgiveness of sins, but it is equivalent to a judicial act by which sentence is pronounced by him as a judge. The priest acts as a judge. I absolve you. I remember saying that in the confession box for 21 years in Trinidad West Indies and I would say it again and again. People would come into the confession box on Saturdays. We had confessions from 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock and then from 6 to 7 we had supper and then from 7 to 8 we had another hour of confessions and people would queue up. I remember distinctly, even though it was many, many years ago, you know, I was sitting in the box and somebody would come and kneel beside me and you're looking through a, a grating, a steel grating, and you can see the person's face. I remember how embarrassing it was, particularly with young women. You know, they would be confessing their sexual sins or other sins they've committed, and sometimes I would see sweat here on their foreheads. You know, it was uh, just, just here. On, you know, it would, and I would sweat <laughs> as well. And it wasn't just because it was tropics. Trinidad's in the tropics. It was a fearful thing. And as the years went by, and I saw people come in and out of confession, and week after week come back with the same sins, I'm just wondering, what, <laughs> what does this deliver? Uh, people coming back with the same sins. Even in my last parish, I remember the youth in the choir and the, in, the, in the youth group that we had, I remember their sins of getting into drugs and fornication and all sorts of things. And when my own youth would come back with the same sins and, you know, and I give them absolution, and, it doesn't seem to make any difference. It was really, really difficult. So this is a topic and it's no wonder we get emails and people coming to our web pages like my webpage, BreenBeacon.org and the other webpage, HelpForCatholics.org, where we, um, we deal with these things. It's no wonder that we have people inquiring because it is a serious, serious <laughs> matter. Even in the Old Testament, the Lord is emphatic. Isaiah 43, chapter 43, verse 25. I, even I, am he that blots out thy transgressions for mine own sake and will not remember thy sins. <laughs> I, even I, the Lord is Emphatic, he repeats the I, I, even I. It's God who forgives sins. It's not institution or any judicial person thinking he is a judge in a confession box. <laughs> it's, it's God and God alone. And uh, it is what the Apostle Paul preached. You go through the Acts of the Apostles and chapter after chapter and you come to, towards the end of the Acts of the Apostles or coming towards the end, chapter 13, 
Paul is preaching and he says, uh, be it known unto you therefore men and brethren that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. Paul preaching that through Christ Jesus the man, the mediator who is God and man is preached to you forgiveness of sins. He is the one and it is the same Apostle Paul that announced the good news in, in Romans chapter 3 that forgiveness is preached and it is not simply forgiveness but as you trust on him his righteousness is credited to you, imputed to you you share in Christ's own perfection in a legal way, it's credited to you, it's reckoned to you, imputed to you. And so Paul could say in Romans 3.21, But now the righteousness of God is manifest without the law. It's manifest as a scene, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon them that believe. There is no difference. <laughs> it's upon them who believe. It rests on you, the righteousness of God, because you're forgiven and you're now deemed to be perfect with the righteousness of Christ. And so you live as a child of God, as a son of God, or as a daughter of God. This is how wonderful it is, summarized in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. It's the riches of Christ's grace. The abundance of grace, the riches of grace. It's wonderful to see the scriptures speak about our Lord Jesus Christ and the wonder of his forgiveness. We look to him, the person of Jesus Christ, and he is the one in whom we are forgiven. It is the amazing work of the forgiveness that comes from God through Jesus Christ because of his perfect life and perfect sacrifice. And that is the, the desire I have for you as you listen to this program that you would know Christ Jesus and the power of his resurrection, <laughs> that you would know the power of forgiveness that is in him and the freedom that comes as we are credited his righteousness because of his glorious work. Now this wonder of God saving us directly in Christ, the Father saving us directly in him, and then being imputed or credited the righteousness of God is so wonderful. It is the, it is the closeness, as it were, with God by the power of the Holy Spirit. You are forgiven, you are declared righteous in Christ as you're forgiven your sins. The wonderful thing it is. What does the Catholic Church substitute for this? It is really sad, you can see, if you go into a Catholic Church, you can see the confession box. And not that many queuing up anymore, but you can see the box there. And that's the box you go into to confess your sins into the ear of the priest. So you have, in place of the direct work of the Holy Spirit from God in Christ, you have two sinners sitting in a box <laughs> close to each other. And one of the sinners is called a priest, and he claims to have power as a judge to forgive you. I mean, how ridiculous can you get? Two sinners sitting in a box together. <laughs> 
And one has the arrogance to think that he can forgive you your sins. But that is how sad it is, and that is the reality of the horrors of the confession box. It has been shown across the world since the Boston Globe first of all here in the United States published the statements to show emphatically that there was evidence of the immorality of priests and pedophilia and in other fornication, adulteries and many other immoral acts and that a lot of it is associated with the confession box. It is really sad to break your heart that this box in which you're supposed to get <laughs> forgiveness of sin can be occasion of sin and a place where you are in danger of being led into sin. So the Catholic Church has many laws about this and in uh, chapter 8 of the book that I just showed you, I give many more of the laws and I'll quote here in this short uh, program, but an example of them is Canon 984 it declares, even if danger of revelation is excluded, a confessor is absolutely forbidden to use knowledge acquired in the confessional when it might harm the penitent. The priest, that is the confessor, is, is obliged not to harm the penitent, that is the one confessing sins into his ears, and he's not to reveal it, if it could harm <laughs> the penitent. And uh, it shows that the Catholic Church is conscious that things can happen or go wrong. It, it's, particularly the, um, it's particularly evident when the priest is hearing confessions of a small group. I remember as a priest going into a nun's convent and the nuns would come one by one and kneel down in the confession box and you give them confession and, and um, then afterwards you'd be socializing and talking to the same nuns and it was very difficult to n not remember or use some of the knowledge you got in the, in the box to, when it came to ordinary conversations with the same people who would confess to you, it is very, very difficult. And it's, uh, it is the, the dangers of, 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 of this confession box. And the Catholic Church talks about the dangers in canon. The priest is not to ask the name of a partner for crime. Uh, or the proc that he had encountered in the confession box. Um, it's the height of insolence to say that you have a power as a judge to forgive sins and then to make rules to protect people from you in your laws that it may be a way that you could harm people by letting facts out afterwards or by uh, revealing names of people who committed crimes with others and it's, it shows that they are aware that this is a dangerous place to be. <laughs> the confession box is a dangerous place to be and that's maybe the reason why <laughs> we don't have many Catholics going to confession as they used to, some still do. And some will still call for the priest to come to their uh, home if they're dying that the priest can hear confession not in a box then but just at the at the bedside and I remember hearing confessions at people's bedsides and that was really really sad because I have distinct memories of giving people absolution when they were dying I absolve you from all your sins in the name of the Father Son and Holy Spirit and what was scary and I can still see it in my mind's eye, I can still see those scenes where I had given a person forgiveness of sins and I saw not many, but a few of those people die cursing God. Frightening. Not only were the sins not forgiven, but they didn't know God. It was, it was frightening. Here you did your stuff as a priest and you gave absolution 
and of course extra bunction as well. Uh, the people could die not only tormented by where are they going to go, but some even blaspheming God as they died. It was really, really sad. And I say this and it's it's traumatic, it's hard for me even to remember those days because I was 21 years a priest. It's, it's hard to remember those days, but remember I do, and I share it with you in the words of Jesus Christ from John's Gospel, chapter 8, verse 36. If the Son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Jesus said, if the Son make you free, he is the Son of God come to this earth to free us from our sins. Come to declare that there is forgiveness in him. That this is eternal life to know him and the Father who sent him. This is the freedom we have and the forgiveness we have. When the Jews ask Christ, what must we do? <laughs> that we may do the will of God. <laughs> the Jews were like Catholics, they wanted to know something to do, you know, some, some, something to practice. And Christ answered them, this is the will of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. It's you believe on Christ whom God has sent. It's not to do anything, it's already been done. Christ died for his own. He died in place of believing sinners on the cross. Are you one of those? Do you know the forgiveness that is in Christ Jesus? That is the forgiveness that sets you free and you know that you have been freed from damnation and you know the fact that forgiveness is of God and not of any man or any, any, any church or any system. This is the glory of what it is to be set free. If the Son set you free, you shall be free indeed. It's lovely to hear from you and I thank God that this program, while short, goes out to many people across the world and it's lovely to hear from you. I have an email address where you can write directly. If you like our YouTube channel, please subscribe by clicking on the subscribe button and then by also clicking the bell above to get an automatic update whenever we produce another YouTube video for our See Answers TV channel. Please share our videos with your friends and relatives. May God bless you. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what is done for Christ will last. See related videos by tapping or clicking screens.